everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn and I'm here with Bill Hope. Hey, Bill. How are you, man? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm very good. Uh, we're just chatting before the live stream. Uh, it's good to see you nice and warmed up in the Blue Mountains, oh, yes. in your new place. <laughs> all rugged up. It is it is cold for those outside Australia. It does actually get pretty cold here, uh, particularly in the morning. I've got my I've got my UGG boots on today. That's how that's how cold it is. Um, so yeah, it's all happening. What's up, chat? Tim Wild Tim is in the chat. That's awesome. Eric, great to see you. Um, D and Johanna, thanks so much. R and B. Awesome. So great to have you here. We're going to have a lot of fun today. We have a 90 uh, minute session and we're here with Bill Hope, um, such a favorite of the stream. And <laughs> what I really, <laughs> it's true. Um, and what I really love about, um, about this session and what we've decided to do, we're going to do a couple of these, uh, which is a little bit more interactive kind of um, illustration and drawing, um, which is actually how I met you. Um, you're doing a lot of this sort of scribing stuff, um, illustrating on the fly. Um, and you've heard me compliment you too many times about how impressed I am by what you too do. Many <laughs> too many times. Too many times. Calm uh, down. <laughs> all right, calm down. Um, and so, yes, I'm really, really excited. Um, and we're going to have some audience participation stuff, all sorts of things. Um, just before we do get started, oh, I don't have my calendar here. I'm going to do that at the end. Um, so I'll just um, mention that we've got like a big week. Um, we're here, back here again tomorrow uh, with Ken Taylor. Um, also from Jackie Winter, um, amazing, very talented, um, guy. very talented, very talented guy. Um, jumping on the live stream, lots of illustration happening this week. Um, and then we have uh, Campbell uh, Milligan from Monster Children on on Friday. Uh, we're doing awesome. we're doing some design and and layout. Um, if you haven't seen that before, Monster Children um, is like an Australian kind of youth culture magazine. So anyone like me that grew up, grew up with grunge and um, skateboarding and stuff like that, they're, they're still flying that flag. It's awesome. Um, so that'll be a really fun, um, fun kind of session. And then we have Martina Martian coming through. We're going to be doing some illustration and bringing those illustrations into Adobe Aero. So it's a big, it's a big week. Um, awesome. But enough about that. Let's let let's jump in, Bill. Um, how, we, okay. how do you want to start? This is this is your your deal. How do you want to start this today? Sure, sure. So, um, uh, yeah, on the previous streams that we've done, they were much more technically minded, but today we want to do something that was much more sort of just loose. I'll be drawing. Um, I'll be trying to keep in one eye on the chat. So um, uh, what I'm going to be doing some months today, we're just going to have a sort of freestyle sketch session. And if you guys want to uh, tune in, um, give me any suggestions for monsters you might like to see. I'll talk a little bit about my process, but mostly we'll just be sort of free sketching. So I'd love to get ideas for monsters, um, things that you'd like to see sketched, uh, any questions you have about monster drawing or illustration in general, just chuck them in the chat and I'll try and get to as many as I can. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to start out with um, one of the ways I kind of started monsters drawing was there, I don't know if you can see it in the background, I've got uh, a book here which is a book called uh, John Draws Monsters by Quentin Blake. And he did this whole uh, illustrated children's book. And it, it's it's about a, a boy kind of learning to draw through through drawing these big monsters. But Quentin Blake, the illustrator, tried to draw like a child again. He tried to sort of like replicate children's drawings through monsters. And it's a really nice way to kind of like loosen up. Um, and I really enjoy it. So I thought I'd start the session um, if we go to my Photoshop screen. Um, uh, by just doing some sort of like a stream of consciousness, like children's style drawing. Um, and if anyone out there is uh, on the computer, um, feel free to draw along. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, he talked about this process of drawing like a child and it being kind of like a stream of consciousness process. Um, so obviously this is not gonna be my best drawing. I'm trying to sort of draw like I would as a four year old. Um, but sort of thinking about the drawing as, as you're kind of knocking it down. So. I've got a, uh, a body for a monster here. It's a monster, so it's going to have uh, lots of eyes. So we're just going to knock out some eyes. Uh, maybe it's got like a, a, a big scary mouth like this. And then it's a monster, so it's got to have lots of teeth. Um, so I'm going to try and knock in as many teeth as I can. Um, maybe it's got some big scary arms coming out and the arm is going to be holding something like a, like a, like a fork or something. And then he might have another one. Oh, he's, maybe he's about to eat something. So maybe he's got a, a, a knife in this one. Put some eyeballs onto our monster. Uh, and then he's a monster, so he's got to have lots of spikes coming out of him. Maybe some sort of decorative markings um, over our monster. He's got to have a tail because he's a, a monster, obviously. 
So we'll put some spikes on our tail. Um, and then he's got to have some legs. So we'll get some legs coming down the bottom here. He's got to have some, some toes coming off the bottom of a monster. Maybe another leg, because, you know, it doesn't have to apply to our binary standards of bi bipedalness. <laughs> Let's get it, like, a whole bunch of other legs coming out here. And I like to keep these really, I'm not worried about anything in particular about how this monster's going to turn up. I'm just kind of knocking him out. Maybe he's got some little antennas coming up the top. Horns. There we go. We got a, we got a really loose kind of uh, uh, fun monster there. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my, my warm up. If anybody has any suggestions for other monsters, feel free to check them in. Um, so it could be a... I don't know, a, a slug monster, a spider monster, anything like that. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd do one sketch where I'm kind of more sort of going through my process of, of, of thinking up a sort of fun cartoony monster. So um, um, I might try and go for a bit of a classic this time and just work on uh, some kind of dragon. So I'm going to start... Often when I'm, I'm thinking about... Um, uh, uh, a, a sketch that I'm just starting out on, I, I sort of try and think about the, the character of the animal. So I wanted this to, to be some sort of not particularly threatening, sort of um, droopy, relaxed dragon. This isn't going to be a scary one. And then I'm sort of just thinking about like, what's the overall shape? So maybe he's going to have a big gut like this if I'm sketching out the body, out the head over here, but sort of the, the, the curve of the back and the whole thing and maybe the legs will just be sort of hanging down like this. And I'm just going to try and articulate the, the feeling of this, this dragon before I think of any details whatsoever. Um, maybe we'll just have some, some little wings coming off the back of this guy. Um, some eye like that. And we'll just have him in profile. Um, and we'll work out that. And once I've done just a really basic outline of something like that, I might drop down the opacity on that layer, open up a new layer, and then we'll start working in some detail. But I'm using my, my favorite inking brush, which is one of the Kyle T. Webster ones. If anyone's doing Adobe Livestream Bingo, um, you can cross <laughs> off Kyle T. Webster brushes. We've mentioned um, Kyle, all right. Yeah, a couple of times. <laughs> um, and it's this lovely scratchy brush. And because it's kind of got lots of imperfections in the brush, I don't really sort of worry about refining the line very much. I can kind of just really um, knock it out and it's got a lovely character to it. So it might be a, a dragon having a bit of a rough morning. Um, uh, let's get some eyebrow stuff in there. I'd love to have like a really curvy mouth on these things. It gives them a lot of character. Hmm. Um, and we're just putting some, some uh, some teeth up on the top and bottom. <laughs> I see Tim's just put in the chat uh, drawing um, his uh, maths teacher from high school um, as, uh, as a monster. <laughs> Might be the next thing to get onto. <laughs> yeah, he's a very open definition of monster, I suppose. Uh, I'll get some nice big horns coming out the top of this guy. I wanted to sort of rotund, almost sort of like pot belly kind of vibe to this guy. <laughs> so let's work it down there. Anyway, how are you feeling this morning, Flynn? I'm really good. Really good. Yeah. Personally. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. yeah you got a busy week coming up? It's a busy week, yeah. We're, we're, we're back with a lot of Adobe Live this week, so there's, there's a lot there's a lot going on. Um, you mentioned the, the podcast that I do as well. That's starting to ramp back up again. So, yeah, it's... Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, it's definitely becoming a, a busy time. Um, cool. Lots, lots happening. And how are you settling into the new place? It's good. It's good. I've actually been um, um, pretty busy on some uh, publishing jobs recently, so mm. I've sort of been able to really bunker down the house and just work away on those. Um, and they've been keeping me very busy. Um, and I was telling you just before we got on the stream, I've, I'm sort of becoming uh, it's incredibly sort of generically domestic version of myself where I'm sort of very interested in lawn mowers and and buying fertilizer up into Bunnings pretty much every day of the week. It's um it's a it's a sad state of affairs for But it's good. Mm. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> 
All That's right. Cool. We'll take some. Um, we'll take some suggestions as well. Um, I did see a platypus up there in the, in there somewhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I've, um, it's very fortuitous. I've just been sorry. I'm warming up a little bit on this dragon. Um, uh, I uh, I've actually been working on uh, a proposal for a book which has a platypus in it. So I'm I'm warmed up for for for, for a uh, for a platypus as well. Cool. Um, yeah, they're interesting characters because they they sort of look. I mean, they're, they're sort of a, a combination of a bunch of different animals, so they already have some sort of monsterish qualities to them. Yeah, they're different. already kind of a hybrid animal, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. So maybe we'll leave off this little dragon character now, um, and um, maybe I'll start on some sort of monstrous platypus. So I'm hoping I can just kind of populate this page as we go along today. Um, so let me grab uh, earlier. Here. Okay, some sort of platypus. It's an interesting, interesting challenge. Um, so let's just start off really loosely sketching this out. Um, so they've got their, this kind of sort of jelly beanie like body, um, and then you've got to sort of factor in the big tail. So let's get um, a nice bit of movement into this guy. <laughs> and We'll try and get the, the duck bill at the top. Um, but um, he's going to be a, a monster platypus. So I don't know. How do you make a, a, a platypus monster? Here? I suppose they've got those. Haven't they got some sort of poisonous um, hooks yeah, on like, there? They have like a back hook on there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I remember oh, reading yeah. about that when I was a... I was a young lad. I remember there's a fun story about platypus. I think when they originally found them in Australia and brought some like back to England or something, they thought it was a hoax. They thought they'd like oh, really? stitch <laughs> stitch together like a duck and like <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> a beaver or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Getting like Darkwing Duck kind of vibes from the. Oh yeah, yeah. There the is top. a bit of that going. Kind of <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, let's try and get a bit of movement into this guy. All right, that's good enough for our underlying sketch. So I'll switch over to my, my main brush now. Yeah, the, 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 the platypus that I've been working on is, is, a, is a much more well-behaved, friendly platypus. So right. it feels sort of a slight aberration now trying to make an evil platypus. <laughs> it's his evil, <laughs> evil clone or evil cousin or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's the sort of... what's the platypus you're working on? Um, um, that, that's that, highly confidential, like... Flynn. Oh, okay, I'd have to right. Kill you, I'll tell you <laughs> Just between us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't even know if platypuses have tongues, but I'm going to work some sort of big tongue in there on this guy. <laughs> Another great thing uh, I remember reading something about. Um, I don't remember who, who was saying it, but how it's it's much easier to draw. It's much easier and more fun to draw um, ugly ugly um, characters or, or, or people than beautiful people because the, the imperfections don't matter as much. And there's a similar kind of thread with monsters. You, the mistakes kind of all just factor into the, uh, the, right. the, the greater character going on. So they're a bit more forgiving. Um, you don't have to get such perfect lines going on. And I, I, I love the sort of... Uh, messiness with monsters as well. I, I really like building up textures, like sort of the the lines and the bumps and the dots and stuff that I'm adding in here. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice process. All right. Okay, I'm just trying to keep an eye on the chat. Match between ducks and Bobo the Corgi. Who's Bobo the Corgi? So Bobo the Corgi. Um, has been on live stream before, so that's Jeff Chen's um, corgi, and he's just like <laughs> a, a, just like a a fluffy cloud of love. He's very yeah, sweet, yeah. very sweet dog. Um, and Jeff's bed is right is right behind where he where he was streaming from. Um, he yeah, was on the live yeah. stream for about ten seconds before he was pooped and just kind of slept on the bed for a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, it has been one of the, the joys of uh, um, working from home and, and using Zoom so much and seeing everyone's pets pop into the chat. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? 
a pleasant distraction. Um, we're collecting the suggestions as well, like in it, like um, in a little slack between Johanna and I. So if we, um, if if they get buried, uh, we can always we can always jump back um, okay. to make sure we don't miss some. Um, there was a question: Are you using a pen tablet? Maybe you could tell us about your setup. Sure, sure. So I'm working on a um, uh, a Mac computer, but I'm using a um, uh, one of the uh, Wacom pen displays. So the one that I'm working on is called a Cintiq 22 HD, um, and um, it's quite an old device. I think it's sort of eight years old or something now, but it works great. Um, and uh, it's been sort of my my primary drawing device for. A long time now. Um, so yeah, yeah, working on a pen tablet. I did start out for many years using sort of a graphics tablet where you're just drawing on the tablet as kind of like a replacement for your mouse. But um, but now I love working directly onto the screen. It's sort of, uh, I never really kind of got over the displacement between drawing in one place and the image appearing somewhere else. So so using the Wacom tablet's been, been awesome. All right, so I've got that platypus down. Should I move on to that person's maths teacher? Um, yes. Do we have any additional details? Um, uh, I think it was. Okay. Um, let I think me it was, see I think it was Tim. What do okay, we know? Tim. What do we know about maths? What? What? Um, how, can, how can we? How can we add like it? Mash it up a little bit more. Maths of fibers. Hmm. He could be a sort of like living Pythagoras theorem kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so maybe if he was uh, the personification of um, uh, Pythagoras's theorem. Amazing. So. Um, uh, what is it? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Is that Pythagoras? I have no idea. I have no idea. <sighs> Why I became an illustrator, folks? Actually, I, I have a cheering, heartwarming math story to do with illustration. I have a couple friends who work in the city as um, as high school teachers, and they're they're obviously constantly getting the um, um, the flack from their students about like when am I ever going to use this? Oh um, yeah. Uh, um, for, 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 for their math stuff. Um, and I was hanging a exhibition of my work a little while ago and I needed to come up with even spacing between the edges of my artworks um, uh, to, to, to get them all equidistant from each other. And I actually had to come up with my own algebraic theorem. Uh, so sort of like the space I need is A um, and it needs to be um, filling such and such space. And I actually use algebra to, to hang my, my art exhibition. So pay attention, kids, because <laughs> even if you want to become an illustrator, you've got to know a little bit of algebra. That's, a, that's amazing. Um, just to throw some more kind of things in there, like a maths ma magician. So it could be magical oh, yeah, yeah, in some um, way as well. I'm going to have a toupee coming off the top there, but maybe a sort of wizard's hat on top of the triangle might be nice. Tim, you got to let us know, does this look like your maths teacher? How close? How accurate yeah, is this? Yeah. <laughs> it's a cruel stereotype, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some glasses on him. I wear glasses most of the time, folks, so, so. Uh, and maybe as a, uh, a, as a weapon, he could be holding some sort of ruler or something like that. The ruler's like a wand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Some magical stuff going on there. And once, once I sort of got into um, working more full time as a as an illustrator, the sort of chances to just sort of be freely sketching. I don't know. Once once drawing becomes work, it, it, I, I don't often sit down and sort of just freely sketch as much as I used to. Mm. Actually, probably the most time I ever spent sketching um, freely was in in math class at high school. So right. there's some sort of. Uh, uh, Poetic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> poetic so did you have like one of those like like was were you sketching a lot in your math book or did you just always have like a sketchbook of some kind that you carried around or uh i i had both but but mostly it was the the margins of math books were, were fully yeah. fully illustrated mm. yeah is that a math book that you like ended up hanging on to or is it like a school where you because i we ended up getting like hand-me-downs from the other kids so Every now and then oh, you, get, yeah. you get one with illustrations in it. And there's something about like boys and sketching in books that you would get particular kind of illustrations. So I'd much yes, prefer I would have <laughs> I would have much preferred to get um, your hand me down book with all your amazing illustrations and what I what I got. 
No, I mostly drew in my own book. I have to admit, I was too much of a, a scaredy cat to uh, to face my my school's book quite as much. I think maybe I put one or two in, but you know, through it through my 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 dark lady years at high school. Okay, I'm I'm quite happy with that guy as a triangle evil math teacher. It's <laughs> pretty fun. cool. Okay. Um, I looked up Pythagoras theorem as well, and you you got it bang on straight away, which is great. And really? Tim, Tim said, "Yep," yeah, and it's a bang on uh, impression. Um, okay, fantastic. <laughs> Um, okay, um, it used to be uh, some sort of thing if I, if I was, uh, actually, don't worry, I'm going to back out from that anecdote. Back out um, quickly. Um, we were yeah, talking okay, about a corgi it. before, so um, if, if you're looking for more okay. suggestions. I don't actually know much what a corgi looks like. I, I hope you, you guys have seen like a fluffy judgment. cloud. It's like a cloud that barks. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's sort of like the long, thin dogs. That like the doesn't the queen have a bunch of corgis? Yeah, queen's queen's all about the corgis. Okay, okay I'm gonna shamelessly bring in a bit of reference for this one. So, is it a monster corgi that we're going for? I think so. We might need like some some way to make it more monster-like. Okay. Well, um, I feel like it'd be a bit of an outrage if I didn't keep this thing a bit cute. So, <laughs> um, maybe it's like a ghost. I've, <laughs> um, I just always think of The Simpsons and Ghost Mutt. Um, I didn't have a TV growing up, Flynn. Uh, I didn't want this to turn into such a deep session, but um, <laughs> um, I missed out on, on, on all The Simpsons references. So, um, uh, a Ghost Mutt. I kind of like the idea of a Ghost Mutt. Maybe it could be um, a, a, a long, thin, ghostly corgi. Um, and it could be, I don't know, what is a ghost corgi chase? I guess it could be some sort of ethereal bone that it never caught up with. Um. <laughs> ethereal bone. I like that a lot. We'll <laughs> <laughs> highlight the eyes of this thing. Okay. Um. What's the Chimera blends from Johanna? Oh, we're talking about okay, a dragonfly and a turtle. Ma Marmac? Marmac. Much longer legs. Okay, okay, sorry. I'm I'm, I'm trying to get feedback from the chat at the same time. <laughs> Is this for the corgi? Well, this is what we're doing. Okay, a dragonfly and a turtle. Let me just try and think this one through. Interesting. Okay, I'm just going to pop this guy. Ghost Bobo. Um, no dogs were harmed in the illustration of this corgi, Johanna. It's all good. We actually had um, had Ramez on last week, um, and he's doing photo manipulation, and there was a skull that he was using in part of the photo manipulation. <laughs> Chat's like, what's that a skull of? And it was a cat skull, and it didn't go down. Oh, it's like, <laughs> pretend. There is something... There is something strange about photo manipulation where you're taking objects and sort of like pulling them apart that, that, that it does feel kind of odd sometimes. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, something strange to it. Okay, so <laughs> I've got a, got a shell for our turtle. That's, that's sort of the start. Um, but it's got to have the long tail-like body and some sort of... Uh, um, this is a dragonfly uh, turtle? This is the dragonfly turtle. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm guessing it has a long tongue because that's probably what they have. Um, let's get some eyebrows going in there. Um, and we'll get some nice turtle fins. Kind of like the look of this thing. Um, it's like a Lapras from Pokemon. Yeah. Anybody getting like a Lapras body? <laughs> Now, you know uh, what Pokemon know what is, right? Or am I just talking to myself here? Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. Isn't it sort of like a... Um, it's kind of a sort of pastry or something, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Why not? Why not? Um, I was at a pub trivia once, and they had one of those things where instead of a question, they had some sort of challenge, and it was to draw your best Pikachu. And obviously all my friends 
push me forward to draw the Pikachu, but I had no, I just had no conception of what Pikachu looked like. <laughs> so I just drew the first thing that popped into my head and I lost and it was just, oh, the humiliation was oh, unbearable. That's gut wrenching. I'm yeah, sure, I'm yeah, sure what you like, drew was better than anybody else's crappy little Pikachu. But yeah, if you don't know, but what it was Pikachu my moment to like. shine, and I had just been sort of had a wasted childhood of not watching um, <laughs> uh, Pokemon, and uh, it, it all fell apart. Okay, getting some real crazy eyes on this. That's a lesson, everybody. Watch more TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ma in the chat saying, cool brush. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is this is the same one, one you were talking about before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's really, it's really nice. It's sort of, um, unlike a lot of really textured brushes um, that sort of like are trying to add heaps of grunge to the brush all the time. And this one's got quite a bit of grunge to it, mm. but you can get a really fine tip out of it. So that's me not pressing hard, but then you can really push it. Mm. So it's got a really nice, really nice variety to it. One. And it's great for fast drawing because I don't, I don't know something about um, when you're sort of doing quick lines like that. You get all the sort of all this nice character coming out in the line. Mm. So it's it's my favorite sort of speed sketching one. Having an old turtle coming together. Um, I guess this is kind of like it's tail or it's thorax or something like that. Like a rudder. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the hardest working wings. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you're thinking about like an animal, like if, like if we sort of said, okay, draw a rabbit. Um, like yeah. have you drawn it? Is it, is it cause you've drawn enough rabbits or rabbit like creatures that you can kind of think of, they probably look a little bit like this or like, do you, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of similarities. Um, uh, once you sort of start drawing mammals or something, like if you imagine, uh, like a horse, uh, it's kind of got that long neck and it's going to be the worst horse in the world, but it's got stuff like the, 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 the back legs kind of go forward and then back and then down right. like that. Mm. And once you kind of get a sense of like a couple of those things, they do apply to a lot of animals. You're kind of just moving those, those shapes around. So a pig um, kind of is like a, a, a really a really chubby horse in a way. And the, the legs kind of do just like a slightly more accentuated version of that. Mm. Um, so if you're thinking about some of the outlines of animals, once you kind of get that sense of how the, the anatomy of it works, you can sort of apply it to other ones. But for the most part, it is just repetition. Um, um, I've been doing um, uh, a book with, with lots and lots of rabbits in it recently. Um, so I'm sort of, I've kind of figured out what my version of a rabbit is. Because um, uh, I mean, there's, if you look at, Bugs Bunny or something, it's completely different. So I'm doing an evil version of a rabbit because we're doing monsters today. <laughs> but um, you kind of um, kind of work out your own abbreviation of what, what the animal looks like. So mm -hmm. something like a rabbit, sort of like that that big hind leg and, and the way that the, the, the back kind of curves down into a little tail. All those are kind of like real sort of simple markers that, that your eye picks up as like, that's a rabbit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like a really distinguishing kind of feature and you get those, yeah. you get those right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've been doing wombats recently and there's just something about like the, the, the flatness of the top of their head. So there's always just like a couple markers. I mean, sorry, this isn't going to work out very well, but they've got sort of their eye quite far, far down in the head. And then they've got this big forehead with some little ears on top and that kind of, <laughs> so just, just finding out what those sort of like, um, those kind of descriptive lines are that, that really make the animal come to life. Once you've kind of got that key, then you can kind of work out the rest of the, the character from that. Amazing. Okay. Steampunk monsters, Steve Festus. Hey Festus, I've, uh, you've been in uh, previous chats before. 
steampunk monster. We don't I'm go really live. Like we don't go live unless Festus is in chat. That's basically the rule. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they were chatting about the, cool. the steampunk was chatting about a suggestion previously about steam steam powered mechanical monster. So like with kids oh, and yeah. stuff. So yeah. So yeah. I think like steampunk plus animal. I think would be super cool. Everyone loves steampunk, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, okay, I'm going to try and do this sand sketch. So, um, uh, I apologize. I'm just going to start out with a top hat because what's more steampunk than that? Mm -hmm. uh, or get a couple of goggles on top of the top hat. Um, and let me try and think of some alternatives for that. Okay, how about we go a steampunk snail? So, I'll put the bottom <laughs> of the, the snail like here. It. Snails are nice and easy, so I can sort of just draw its little sluggy body. And it's got that funny little curl as it goes down into the body. Um, and it wouldn't be steampunk unless it had some gears. So let's get some gears in there as well. And some kind of uh, system at the top of the, the hat. These are some great suggestions today, guys. Very impressed. Feel free to shout out anything that comes up, Flynn, and I'll try and uh, Try and work it in. Let's move this side down. I get some more rivets in there. What else is steampunk? Um, like gears and rust. Um, yeah. Try and make it a bit more top hat like. Belt buckles and. Yeah. Kind of like a belt buckle. like a fob watch <laughs> to keep track of time. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's got, got a little watch in there. Um, maybe some sort of parasol. Oh yeah. Do we know anything more about Festus? I want to find out the mystery behind the man um, or, or the woman, I suppose. We have facts. Festus is from New Zealand, so maybe we could do a New Zealand inspired. Um, but yeah. originally, originally from Canada, so hang on. If we're mashing things together, could we get some sort of Canadian slash New Zealand hybrid creature happening? Okay. Um... I'm sorry, I'm blanking on New Zealand creatures apart from a Kiwi. Is there any other really distinctive New Zealand? Um, uh, yeah, I'm thinking Kiwi animals. as well. It's um, steampunk. Oh, there's okay. the mower. There's the mower, which is like an ostrich oh, kind yeah. of style thing. Could be like a so moose, a moose is, mower. A mower, a mower is extinct. I don't know. Festus, yeah, go outside. Maybe. Let us know if you see a mower. <laughs> and if not, we'll assume they're they're extinct. Um, <laughs> so I suppose a very Canadian thing would be a bear. Could you have a bear mower? I, I, I think I'll, I might try for a bear kiwi. I actually nice. kind of struggled with bear, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna look up a little bear reference. Uh, um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing it now because the kiwi kind of has the big, big body and, and the little head, right? Right, and they're like and long, snout. long snout. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll just have a uh, a kiwi with some giant bear claws or something. <laughs> I don't know if you can combine. I guess it could have little ears. <laughs> Got approval from Festus. Bear kiwi is cool. <laughs> cool. Okay. Our mowers are indeed extinct. Ah, oh, no. poor mowers. Poor mowers. Two times. I 
I think they were one of those those poor animals that just had somehow got to the top of the food chain and were completely oblivious to um, the idea of having predators until humans showed up. And so they're probably just walking too easy, into people's too easy to catch. Thing. Like yeah. walking into people's yeah. sandwiches. Yeah. That's, um, that's what's it's rough. That's yeah. That's the dodo story, isn't it? Pretty much. They just basically <laughs> Hear another, yeah, hear yeah. another dodo in distress, and they'd all just kind of waddle over and see what's up. Yeah, yeah, I feel like they were kind of ripped off because of their name. Like the name just sounds like the kind of animal that would would wander onto someone's. Yeah, they didn't um, have a chance. Or something. Yeah, yeah. If they had a really cool name, like you know, I don't know. all right, Survi- I'm struggling like with what I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the best. It's the best. Uh, bear key we're gonna see today. Um, it's not the best one I could have done, but it's, it's, it's what you're going to get. It's <laughs> amazing. Okay. Um, um, how about a drop bear? A drop bear? Okay. Gosh, I, I, I went um, on a bushwalk once with a friend from overseas who was who had really never left the city before, um, mm. so was was terrified of sort of any any kind of um, um, any kind of Australian animals, um, and uh, um, I was giving him the whole runaround of talking about drop bears and hoop snakes and the the the, the, the rest of it. Um, and then my dog that we were walking with ran off and chased off a tree like the biggest goanna you've ever seen. And there was sort of like there was just this bush rustling around with this giant black tail flapping about on top of it. it looked like a sort of scene from Jurassic Park or something. It totally freaked this guy out. It freaked <laughs> me out. Um, okay. This is great. It's hard to reference a drop bear because they're so elusive. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a little forgiving in that I'm sort of failing to draw a koala, but um, <laughs> um, uh, that, that's okay because it's a drop bear. It's a different thing, you know. Totally different thing. People often get them mixed up with koalas. Yeah, yeah. They're far more ferocious. These creatures are being created so fast, yes. So, so, so fast. Try um, to fill in the space. We've got, we've got a reasonable menagerium. Is that a word? Menagerium? Menagerie? Menagerie, yeah. Menagerium? And we're learning a lot today. <laughs> okay. Cool. So um, yeah, over, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to try and do a few more of these sessions. Um, and uh, we, we'd really love people to tune in and give us some ideas. But we're going to um, just have a sort of a different theme each week. So uh, we're going to do one just a, of sort of like animals at the zoo. I mean, I suppose this is kind of like a sort of demented zoo that we work on now. But we'll have um, uh, one at the zoo. And I'm, I'm forgetting off the top of my head what the other themes will be. But um, the zoo yeah, we'll try it all aboard. Uh, a couple of different Oh, yeah, yeah, and there was one last one. Anyway, every Tuesday morning will be, I mean, Wednesday morning, doing it. Yeah. Maybe there's just a unsuspecting uh, eucalypt leaf down the bottom. Drop bear facts. Yeah. Drop, drop bears live in closed canopy forest as well as open woodland on the margins of dense forest. They're never encountered near roads or human habitation. I think it's Vegemite that you're meant to rub on your face to keep them Oh, alive. really? <laughs> <laughs> so the saying goes. A oh, drop bear um, in a Lucho Libre mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Jordan. How you doing? Sorry. You at work today, Jordan? <laughs> 
I, 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 I hope those I hope those two ideas were were independent because um, immediately underneath um, Festa said put a Mexican wrestling mask on the drop bear, which is a lucha libre <laughs> mask, right? Like that's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um. I get an idea of what it looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I know the ones. Maybe I can just get a bit of. Uh, um, something like that going on. Okay, that's, that's enough. It's, also, it's a bit of a Dame, Dame, Dame Edna, Dame Edna um, <laughs> mask. <laughs> so good. This is great fun. I love doing this. Um, oh, frozen for a second. I'm sure you'll be back in a sec. Yeah, drop their facts. Jordan was saying um, to Bill, working from home, so your live streaming is a perfect use of a second monitor. That is a great use of the second monitor. Bill's just frozen for a second, but I'm sure he'll be back. Uh, meanwhile, keep um, keep the suggestions coming through. Um, we are still collecting them. We're going to be here for a little bit, a little bit longer this morning. Um, I think I've had a hard cut with Bill, so he might be a minute or two. So keep the keep the suggestions coming coming along. Can always tell when it's like um, a hard uh, internet uh, sever um, because everything everything disappears. But yeah, we'll be back in a few minutes. Um, keep the questions coming, and I'm just gonna reach out to Bill. Sure, he'll be back. Uh, Rosellas was another one. Let's throw Rosellas in the mix. An angry tree. Yeah, we can do that. Oh, we've got you back there, Bill. We're back. We're back. Okay. All right. Sorry, folks. No worries. It happens. Um, are you there? Yeah, cool. That's great. Okay. Back in business. Well, back, back in business. Okay, cool. Um, can you just mute yourself? On the second one. Into? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Are we the back drop, streaming? The drop bear's got you. Yep, yep, yep. We just kept streaming. <laughs> okay, okay. Cool. Oh, all right. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, uh, we had a little technical dropout here. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Some system may have been overloaded with, with monsters. It's just um, too, I was, too, many, I was in, too many monsters in the system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, I was uh, in the process of asking you if you had any uh, favorite monsters you were drawing, Flynn, in your youth. Anything that, that came up? Anything for me? Mm -hmm. um, just anything duck related. Because ducks are anything the Anything duck related? Yeah, okay. ducks are the Where did that come from? Okay, so just, just my. I'll tell a story. I'll tell the story of my ducks because there's there's a bunch of people in chat that know that I love ducks. So uh, my okay. mom my mom is well she's retired now, but she was a veterinarian, 
and I lived um, on the same, like where her veterinary surgery was in like a granny flat. Um, so basically mm. from when I was about 19 until I was about 26, I lived there um, by oh, myself. Wow. So I was always hanging out with all the animals that were there. Um, yeah. And, and when you're, when you're, when you're a vet, uh, especially in like a suburban kind of area, um, people will bring you mm. every animal you've ever heard of all the time, constantly. Um, and what will typically happen is people will say, oh, like someone maybe like ran over this uh, pigeon or, um, you know, this, this snake looks sad. Um, but they'll yeah, drop it off yeah. and then they, and then they leave because it's not theirs that they, they're like, okay, I've done yeah. my, I've done my part. I've, I've handed it over to a professional to, um, and then, and then yeah. that's it. So you'd end up with like all these crazy animals. We had a fairy penguin, um, for what? a while. Yeah. Cause they, they, that's crazy. They'd, yeah, they'd hang out and they get like a little bit injured. So we'd kind of fix it up and then send it back. Um, yeah, yeah. but, um, yeah, but then we ended up getting a lot of ducks. So I just kind of built a pond in the backyard and grew up yeah. kind of, you know, in my adult life, like just having ducks hanging around and they're really fun oh, and cool. they're really cool. So ducks yeah. are friends, not food. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's a good principle to live by. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. Maybe ducks are really hot. I don't know if I've ever eaten a duck that I really enjoyed. Um, it's the guilt because they're so cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm drawing a cute little duck here. Do you want me to turn this into a, a, a monster duck, Flynn? Or, yeah, it could um, be like a vampiric. Just one nice duck in there. I'm just thinking of like other things that people have suggested. Some people were suggesting some like vamp, vamp, vampiric kind of stuff. Um, okay. And I think that lends itself well with the bill, Bill. Um, yeah, yeah. Darkwing Duck, yeah. Darkwing Duck was a favorite of mine. Let's get dangerous. That's right. Sorry, I'm guessing this is another sort of '90s TV reference that I've uh, yeah, yeah, out yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't. Ha so you didn't have a TV. You just weren't interested. You never really watched TV growing up. No, no, we didn't have one. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think it was some sort of political stance by my parents or something like that. Um, right. Yeah. No, I was. I was thinking about it during like the the whole sort of start of the quarantine time, like. I had just so much of my time as a childhood being incredibly bored. Um, and uh, I think I think it is productive sometimes being really bored for long periods of time. Mm. Um, you sort of have to make a bit of your own fun. But yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I, mean it, I, I sort of still hold on to a little bit of like, we're one of the people that don't have a TV, but it's kind of a, a pointless claim now. I mean. Mm. Everybody's spending so much time just on Netflix and things. It doesn't really count not having a TV. So but do you have a, it, it really did mean something. I remember, I can't remember what sitcom it's from. Um, you won't know because you don't watch TV. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think someone was saying, oh, we don't have a TV. And they're like, oh, what is your furniture point towards? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's really funny. So um, yeah, I was in a, a, like a, a, a sort of secondhand vintage store the other day. Um, and they had one of the really old... Um, uh like radio sets and the, they're, they're really incredible in that they, they are sort of built like a sort of like fancy ornate centerpiece for your house like before mm. you had a tv you had sort of a a an elaborate wooden um radio cabinet so you could all gather around the radio of an evening and it would be sort of the centerpiece of your home mm. but um no i think our sofas either faced each other in summer um or uh, we had a fireplace as well, and fireplace is just kind of like early TV. Um, right. You can mindlessly stare into it. Yeah. So my question now is, um, do you have a t do you have a TV now? Uh, we don't. Uh, mm -hmm. We've I, I, actually, to, to be fair, I've got one in the garage if we wanted to use it for anything. But um, no, we we still don't have a TV. We do have a fireplace though, so you know, back on back on that train. Right. Yeah. Probably why you're so talented. <laughs> yeah, you didn't waste, didn't waste your youth in front of the TV. Um, well, I had a lot of, a lot of spare time. It's a cool duck. Okay, got a kind of vampire duck here, and maybe I'll go for some sort of vampire cow. Yes. Is that what they have? Cows? Is it a cow? 
not entirely sure. We had any new suggestions come through in the, uh, the chat? Test the devil. That's devil. That's funny. Um, let, let me know if, if you got any ideas, Flynn. Um, yeah, because we were offline and trying to bring you back, I missed a whole bunch. Let me just check in, see how we've done. Um, so we've got Zookeeper and stuff. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. there's two. Yeah, Zoo Director. Um, yeah, the Tasmanian Devil is coming through. I may have missed some in there. We could just draw heaps more ducks. Hey, like that'd be fine. <laughs> Um, Count Duckula, I missed that pun. Well done, everyone. I like it, Tim. So good. Um, fairy Penguin. I did mention a fairy oh, penguin yeah. before, didn't I? Yeah, maybe maybe I'll, I'll, I'll work on a little freaked out zookeeper. Maybe there's some sort of monster zoo up here that the, the gates have been left open. Um, um, okay. There was I'll a question... Uh, oh, yeah, so go ahead. About 35 minutes left. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, doing well. Going to need some more canvas. Um, there was a question, how do you train your mind to get the idea so fast? Do you look at images all the time or look to other drawings? Which is a great question. Thanks for the question. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, well, I mean, like, like Flynn was saying, um, we kind of met while I was doing... Um, um, I guess I still do it, but I haven't done it since uh, the, the pandemic kicked off. Um, but I used to do a lot of work um, doing live drawing at events. So as people were talking at events, I'd be drawing to sort of keep up with them. And that kind of uh, pressure of trying to keep up with someone speaking in real time uh, leads you to sort of, um, I don't know, I think I think I can kind of like uh, detach my brain a little bit and be drawing one thing and talking and trying to think about another thing. Um, and I'm not quite sure where that stems from. I think I, I, I spend a lot of time drawing and listening to podcasts and because you're kind of like zoning out and concentrating on what's happening on the podcast, you're kind of drawing with one part of your brain and, and, and thinking with another. Mm. Um, uh, so I think maybe that's part of it, but a lot of it's just repetition. I just, I just do it a lot. So, um, uh, it's uh, yeah. A, a lot of the 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 the, 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 the animals uh, I've, I've drawn enough times, or, or the, the the monsters I've drawn enough times that, that I can kind of recall that shape, and I, I don't have to. I mean, if you, you ask me to draw something I've, I've never seen before, it would obviously take a bit more time. Like Pikachu. Like Pikachu. Yeah. Um, okay, I've kind of got this freaked out zookeeper. Um, I'm going to have some sort of monster zoo sign. A couple of great, great suggestions have, have come through as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let, Let me know and I'll try and uh, just send them over now, Flip, and I'll have a think. All right. So, um, fireplace TV monster. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. I really like it. Um, and uh, Ma suggested like Pythagoras, like a dinosaur made out of a slice of pie. Um, very good, very good. Is, Top points. Yeah, you get a lot of you get extra points for if you're if you're making a pun. We should have we should mention that. I think <laughs> yeah. I think um, yeah. it's hard not to go down the pun the pun route. So yeah, yeah. Um, um, draw a horse. Funnily enough, of, um, Jordan he, he did draw a horse before, but that was just an illustration. Oh, really, Jordan? That's, that's very funny, Jordan. I've worked. With, sorry, this this goes back. Uh, <laughs> is this an time. inside joke? Actually, this is an inside joke. I used to live with Jordan and we had a housemate called Amelia and um, she didn't draw a lot, but was the person in primary school who could was really good at drawing horses. And at the time, horses were kind of like my drawing. Well, I, I have a lot of Achilles heels. I'm a multi-heeled kind of guy. But one of the things I could not draw was horses to save my life. And Amelia took great joy in teasing me constantly about my inability to draw horses. And she went as far enough to buy me a sort of kids how to draw horses book for Christmas. Oh, awesome. um, and I took it all way too seriously, drew a lot of horses from then on uh, <laughs> to sort of uh, get her back. Um, so I've already drawn a horse today, Jordan, and maybe you weren't paying attention, so that's that. Oh. By the way, happy birthday for the other day. Happy birthday, um, uh Okay, I might try the uh, TV fireplace because um, uh, I. 
Yeah. My 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 grandfather was a um, uh, actually a really amazing oil painter, and um, uh, in later in life got pretty hardcore into uh, Catholicism and, and moved out to the desert and built his own chapel um, wow. that he filled with frescoes all on the inside. Um, and he'd actually been a TV producer producing uh, um, rock and roll TV shows in the 60s and felt like he had been part of um, uh, sort of the 60s revolution and all the uh, immoral behavior that came with that um, and had it on his fresco of his chapel in the mountains um, was a giant painting of a TV as kind of the devil. Um, so I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm playing into a, uh, a family line of evil TV drawing here. Wow. By, uh, uh, I'm working that in. So this, this, this TV has uh, deep roots. It's got a background story and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do like a whole origin story about the TV fly, fireplace monster. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh, maybe we'll just have the TV on fire. Um, and I'll try and get a really scary face. On this guy. <laughs> I think this um this one and the school teacher are the scariest with these human amorphic kind of faces in them. Some yeah, yeah. Sure. the other book that I've got in the background, if anyone can see, is uh, Gerald, Gerald Scarf, who was a British uh, illustrator in the 60s. And um, this was one of the books that we had in our bookshop when I was growing up, and it was one of the ones I was not allowed to look at. So obviously I spent a lot of time looking, looking at, at it. it. <laughs> and um, he was a, uh, um, uh, a political cartoonist in the 80s and he does the scariest creepy faces like this so a lot of my work is derivative of, of Gerald Scarf wow. um, but yeah there are some freaky freaky drawings he did so um, <laughs> I'm sort of trying to follow on that line a little bit okay uh, maybe we'll have a little cable coming out the back oh perfect yeah. <laughs> um, there's been two snake suggestions oh yeah yeah. Um, so there's a belly dancing, oh, belly dancing snake, which is uh -huh. interesting in and of itself. Like, does it just kind of wobble on the ground, um, or a golfing snake as well? So golfing snake, <laughs> belly dancing snake. I think there's a snake, um, snake monster incoming. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, a golfing snake is very tricky. How does it hold the, uh, the, um, the, the, yeah. the club? Club. Maybe if it's like coiled up in a tree, so you got a snake coiled up in a tree, it could kind of like swing its head or something like that. Mm. Um, so maybe I've had a snake like so, um, and I guess it has to have a little golfing hat. Um, I don't know, really know what a golfing hat looks like. Let's, let's say that's a golfing hat. Um, And maybe if I draw a golf club kind of to the side, I'll, I'll just sub it in after I've sketched it up. Oh, I love his little hat. <laughs> He's very cute. <laughs> He's very cute. Um, has anyone seen the Rick and Morty episode where, with all the snakes? It's hilarious. Oh, I watched a bit of that on, uh, on, on YouTube the other day. For all my high and mighty talk about um, not having a TV, I've, I've been a, a YouTube tragic for a long time, so don't worry, I've <laughs> absorbed probably more trash than anyone. Um, I'm, I'm not above any of it. Um, I'll put a little plug in there. This is a good solution. I like that. He's in a lot of trouble um, if he's on the green, though, right? Like, not very many tree, trees hanging over the green. He's going to have to... Oh, uh, that's very like, true. Yeah. Nose it in or something. Yeah. Oh my God, Tim! We did um, we did we did mention that um, <laughs> puns, puns kind of float to the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how about a snake that's into maths? A python, 
That's out of control. A python. That is out of control. But, you know, <laughs> Tim, I'm, I'm willing to give it a go. Um, 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 this is oh what God. I'm here for today. My God. It's just my job. Um, okay, so have a little tea. Uh, and the thing. There you go, golfing snake. I, I didn't think this is where we'd end up today, but this is where we are, <laughs> and that's fine. That's so great, like you're thinking about um, like the movement of it, like you know, kind of like he's not just holding the the club. The club has been swung. He's kind of looking up at the club, like you are meant to follow through um, with your swing, yeah, and yeah. then the ball's going. So it gives that, like, obviously that illusion of of movement. But you did that so quickly, so like so naturally. Oh, thanks, man. That's cool. I'm quite happy with that moment myself. I'll yeah. take that. Um, okay, so we're doing a um, a pie, and am I correct? Is that pie? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so, okay. Jeez, so much maths this morning. It's a lot of math, a lot more maths than most live streams, I'll definitely. Yeah, I'll was definitely not expecting it. it. Okay, um, so let's go like this, and then the snake kind of goes up like that. Um, and then it goes like that. Uh, maybe circles around once more. Just make this one quick and easy. But there you go. <laughs> Python. Python. I love it. Okay. That's a good point, cool. Johannes. Johannes said maybe. Um, the snake, if it's like near the green, it could hang off the golf cart. So yeah, that's true. Maybe the golf cart oh, yeah. drives drives yeah. around. Yeah. That's a good. I like this world that we're building for these characters. Like it's it's not just a yeah. one note thing. There's a backstory. That makes there. sense. Yeah. Okay. Um. What were some other ones that came into snake turns into pool cue to putt? Oh, that's very good. Um. Mm, Was it massive tarantula? Asymmetric snake. Oh yeah. So what was the tarantula? Massive tarantula being ridden by a Frankenstein monster. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna need some more space for that, I think. I'm just gonna shrink everything down again. Um, okay. Uh, massive tarantula being ridden by Frankenstein's monster. Okay. Um, um, I'm trying to think what a tarantula looks like, really. I don't know what their spider is shape of their body is. I'm just gonna go a kind of generic one and then, I mean, they've got, okay, they've got lots of eyes. We can go with that. Uh, they've got the big mandibles. Um, so lots of eyes, big mandibles. Um, they're hairy, so we'll put some hair in. Um, and then we're gonna have some big legs, so. I'm trying to kind of think of the remembering the big spiders from Harry Potter. What were they called again? Um, what the spiders? Did they have their before? own? They had their own name. Did yeah, they? There, there was there was a particular name for the giant spiders that lived in the magical forest. Oh. So, um, I don't know. Chat will help us out. I feel like if Jordan's still there here, he would know what that is. He's pretty I feel, good like, that I feel like Johanna would know that as well. Um, okay, so we've got so many legs on spiders, Flynn. I don't know if you know this, but there's eight legs on every spider. It's a lot of legs. It's a lot of legs. Yeah. I did know that. I don't I know think much. Spiders are a that. little bit inconsiderate of us illustrators out here about to draw so many legs. <laughs> Well, you can um, cheat and just okay, draw seven, and because uh, one can be hidden by the body, you'll be fine. It's very true. It's very true, and we'll never know. Maybe he's a seven-legged spider. You'll have to live with that. Unknown. He's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> he's a monster. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna. It's been a lot of scary. I'm gonna try and make a cute Frankenstein's monster. Um, okay, important. Um, have the, the cog coming out the side of the head. Um. <laughs> I'll have 
Oh, the stitches are a nice touch. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of hair on this guy. Never actually read Frankenstein, the Mary Shelley one. I should no. Uh, I just think entirely of the um, um, Mel Brooks Young Frankenstein. Have you seen that, Flynn? The Mel Brooks Young Frankenstein? Oh, that sounds like something yeah. I would have seen a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's from the 70s or something like that. It's mm. very, very good. <laughs> Leech for his spider. The I might Harry, actually. Harry Potter okay. name uh, Aragog. The species was Aragog. called. That's the main one. I feel. I feel. Oh, yeah. Ac Acromantula. There you go. Thank you, chat. Who was that? That was Johanna. Ah, oh, nice work, Johanna. I might just shave this guy because I kind of need to be. A little bit darker. Yeah, some love for young Frankenstein other... in the chat for sure. Oh really? Great, yeah. great. Love. Um, ready for another suggestion? Yeah, um, so rhino, a rhino stuck in an elevator in downtown New York. <laughs> <laughs> there was another rhino suggestion yeah. before as well. I quite like that. So yeah, maybe maybe we need to bring a rhino into yeah. the mix. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Thanks for everyone for tuning back in. I, I don't know if the, the, the whole thing dropped out before. Um, I think that may have been my internet. So I apologize for that. Oh no, but it's all good. Nice so happy we're all still here. Yeah, we just we just lose lost lose your video and and the and the desktop sharing that we're doing. Um, uh, okay, right. Then, but right. We, we keep going, chat keeps going, so you just kind of pop out and pop back in, so it's not a big deal. Right, right. Okay, how did you how did you fill the time, Flynn? Did you have any anecdotes of your childhood that you could, uh, stories from the veterinary hospital? No, see, that's why I have Joe. So Johanna's in chat, so she, oh, right. she okay. can take care of that, mm -hmm. and then I can sit okay, over cool. here and, and panic um, and, uh, right. <laughs> and and try to try yeah. to bring you back. But actually, there's not really much that... I can do it's it's you just join in the same way that we did before when once everything kicks back right, in yeah we've only had it ha happen yeah. a couple of times but it's Australian internet for those not in Australia you you, you I'm sure you have better internet than us um, and every now and then there's just like a hard cut just occasionally happens yeah okay I'm going for sort of very <laughs> jammed in port right now stress inside this is great this, um, Maybe there's a, a, a poor person stuck in there as well. Um, okay, let's let's pinch that one up. Oh. Uh, I've been following a bit of this SpaceX stuff about the, um, the the satellites they've been launching to provide internet. The Starlink thing. Do you know anything about that, Flynn? Oh, I don't actually. No, I remember seeing a little bit about it, but no, I'm not. I'm not well versed on it. Not yeah, enough to not enough that, to but... have an opinion on a stream. Right. I, I, I think he's, he's launching sort of like a international array of satellites that could provide internet to everyone and all our efforts with the NBN and everything could be entirely undone by Elon Musk just sorting it out. I'll take it. Yeah. I'd happily roll the dice on another internet infrastructure for <laughs> Australia, that's for sure. Um, Very early job I had was doing a bunch of advertising stuff for the NBN way back in the day. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I was part of that. Uh... So it's your fault. That's, that... Yeah, a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> um, Yasunari mentioned in the chat, I can't believe the speed of execution just after an idea launched. Very good work. Yes, absolutely. Oh, thank you very much. Very kind of you. Tim's asking, who is the real monster here, the rhino or the elevator? <laughs> I, like, I like the way your mind works. Good philosophical question, yeah. 
Maybe maybe we can. I think I think the elevator is the problem right here. Wow. Um, here's a bit of the old perspective warp tool. Maybe we can have it inside of a. It was meant to be in New York, wasn't it? So um, we'll get a bit of a uh, city skyline going on. We've got about 15 minutes left, by the way. Oh, yeah. If anybody has any sort of just much more general Photoshop-y illustration, whatever questions, feel free to chuck them in the chat as well, and I'll, I'll do my, my level best. There we go. So it was one of the people that you had um, later in the week, someone, Martinez, did you say, um, Flynn? Martina, Martina Martian. Martina, yes. yeah. Yes. Okay, I think she's represented by the same agency as me in the UK. Oh, really? Illustration X, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that makes sense. She spends uh, quite a bit of time in, in the UK. Yep. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Poor oh, little right eye guy. Squished in. Um, I know this Sorry, question what? comes up. I know this question comes up on other streams, so I thought, I might, why not ask now? Um, is how did you first get an agent? Um, like, obviously, you're very, very talented, but I know the question comes up a bit, so maybe some people in chat are interested, uh, like what's what's kind of the first step? Like, is it reaching out to an, you know, an agency? I know in Australia you have Jackie Winter. Um, you know, it's like, hey, look yeah. at my work. Like I, need, I, I want representation or do they discover your work and then reach out to you? How does that, how does that, how does that work for you? Sure, sure. So, I mean, uh, different people do it all, all kinds of different ways. Yeah. Um, so I've had uh, three, three agents and they've all kind of come in different ways. Uh, the first one that I had, I met uh, the guy who ran the agency directly at kind of like an industry speed dating portfolio showing off event mm -hmm. that happened every once in a while. Um, but basically a portfolio and uh, after a couple months of chatting back and forth, he offered me a couple small jobs and I kind of worked my way up from there. Um, and uh, with the, the agency that I'm with now, Jackie Winter, uh, was simply a matter of me emailing them my portfolio, and that that was about it. I mean, mm. it was there were a number of circumstances at the time that made that that work out, but it was simply a matter of reaching out uh, to them and showing them the portfolio that I had at the time. And most agencies have a pretty open door policy on sending portfolios, and even if you feel like you're not entirely ready, um, uh, I just do it anyway because. You, you, you can only, um, if, if you're someone uh, looking to get into the um, industry and you, and you would like to have an agent, um, they'll often give you feedback on, on what they think is good and what they think needs a bit of work in, in your portfolio. And uh, it's never going to damage the relationship you're showing enthusiasm for them as an agency. Mm. Uh, it simply isn't happens that people say, you're not ready right now, therefore we're going to decide you're never ready. It just doesn't work that way. There's so many stories I've heard of people who have contacted agencies over years um, and eventually they said, well, we've got a place for you now and we feel like your work is up to the place it needs to be. Let's get something going on. So um, uh, definitely reach out to agencies, send your work around. Um, and... Yeah, just don't just don't be too off put by how scary that process can be because I, I totally understand showing your work to, to new people can be um, yeah a scary experience, but it's always worthwhile doing, and the more feedback you can get, the better. So that would be my little oh, cool final on the thing. Awesome, it's great advice. Love hearing that. Um, so we got about 10, 10 minutes until like a hard cutoff, so we might have time for one more. Um, yeah, okay. So we want to go through. There was quite a lot. Um, and we will be back next week as well. So we'll be doing this for a while. So if you're having fun, um, you've got some more suggestions. We've got a different kind of theme happening next week. So each week we're going to do a different theme. Um, 
So if we miss them, definitely come and, and jump in because there's lots of great suggestions today. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, Patina Pinto, um, thanks for your suggestion of the poisonous starfish tree. I'll, I'll see what I can do there. Uh, just saw your question about um, uh, what's the best software to draw with. Uh, have I tried Sketchbook Pro? I have tried Sketchbook Pro a little while ago, but not recently. I don't know where it's at right now. But um, it, there's just so much good drawing software. I, 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 I would just try as many as you can and you'll find a lot that works for you. They all, in terms of basic drawing, they all do, um, uh, they all do the basics. Um, so even with the, the most cut down simple drawing software, you can get a long way. So I wouldn't stress, I would just draw as much as you can and you'll find the one that's right for you if you try enough out. So yeah. Um, Good advice. But obviously, we're on the maybe live stream, so Photoshop, which is <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we are here. Um, um, Tim was actually asking, do you ever use brush smoothing? Which is a great question. Oh yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I was I was drawing in Photoshop for a long time before brush smoothing came along. Um, now that it is uh, in Photoshop and and on so many other um, drawing software platforms. Um, I do use it every once in a while, but for this kind of drawing, I really avoid it because um, I, with this kind of drawing, when you're looking to sort of like capture little nuances and mistakes of the brush and things like that, smoothing can really take some of that character out of your line. I mean, it's a fantastic tool to use um, if you're trying to make something really sort of sharp and clean. But um, I, I just think uh, like so many tools, it's something to be used in moderation. So. Um, mm. And also, I know some people get too used to it, and they kind of it kind of freaks them out if they don't have smoothing on. And right. I don't think that's a great place to be. So um, when you need to get that perfect line, totally turn it on. It's amazing. But um, but I would just be cautious about it. Yeah, interesting. Um, was there a final suggestion, Flynn, that you came across? Uh, yep. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch. Yeah. So it was like um, octopus on a bicycle. Um, <laughs> we need a we need a whale within the mix. Um, yeah. eating a bunch of burgers or subs like a metro werewolf so that could fit with our New York theme um, yeah. po and poisonous starfish tree <laughs> demented um, demented uh, animal crossing that's for Johanna that's Festus for Johanna's benefit for sure um, so yeah there's lots of ideas there so you get to take your pick I think because we've got time for one more okay um, I think I'm going to try and we'll have to start okay okay advice. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to try uh, a werewolf, um, kind of looks like Wile E. Coyote. I'm going to try a werewolf eating a burger, just because I, I don't really know how to draw wolves. I'm kind of going for a very cartoony uh, version of, of that. the ambient sort of uh, electronica hip hop mix that we have going on in the background, Flynn. Is this is it um, just something you found on Spotify? Or? It's Chill Hop. Chill Hop. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yep. It's um, good background, good background music um, that, that yeah. we, we're allowed to play and all that sort of stuff um, cool, cool. in the background. It's really good for like studying and stuff like that. Um, I'll occasionally yeah, listen to yeah. it if it's like like noisy or something, or like um, I'm rarely in the house by myself at the moment due to due to quarantine mm -hmm. stuff. But when I was working by myself, yeah. I'm like, I've got this whole day to myself. I'll kind of set, might set up chill hop to come through some decent speakers in the house and just kind of lose myself a little bit. Or I do what you do and cool. I'll just listen to heaps of podcasts, but it depends what kind of work you're doing. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah. If I need to be reading anything, I, I, I really can't listen to any music with with lyrics or anything like that. So I've got a sort of couple ambient playlists like that as well that I use. Okay. Off the cuff, that's my my <laughs> best version of Crazy Werewolf Eating Burger. That's awesome. Yeah, Tim's all over it. He knows exactly what we're listening to. Chill Hop Records and um, Andrew Apple Pie. That is exactly. Who it is, you know who we're listening to more than I do. <laughs> <laughs>
fantastic. All right, so that's that's a, a summary of where we got up to. Thank you so much for all the suggestions for everyone. It's been really fun trying to keep up and 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 get these things out. I love doing this kind of thing. So um, oh, it's been um, awesome. I've, um, it'd be really really fun to have anyone back next Wednesday. But um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been great. Yeah, thanks everyone. Some great suggestions in there. Um, so, um, is there any chance that we could? You could share this with everyone, like in our Discord or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you right after we get off the stream and feel free to post it wherever you like. Oh, that would be cool. Oh, thank you. I really do appreciate that. Um, and yeah, check out check out Bill's amazing work. Um, share his portfolio like on his Jack and Widget profile and also Instagram and all that stuff. Check him out. Phenomenal, phenomenal um, artist. Um, it's great timing because someone's just about to start drilling next to my next to my wall. So. Um, thank you, thank you, neighbor. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, please join our Discord as well. So we've just started it. Um, jump in and check it out if you want to um, hang out with us um, outside of the streams. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want any tips as we're going along, we've just started it. So jump in. Um, and thank you everyone for being in chat. We'll be back um, tomorrow with the amazing Ken Taylor, um, who has not been on Adobe Live before. I'm really looking forward to. Um, if you're not familiar with his work, um, to, to check it out because he's like one of the global phenomenons um, oh, yeah. right here in You're, you're definitely familiar with his work. You would have yeah, seen it before. You would have seen it yeah, before. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be very, very, very exciting. Um, and thank you, Bill. Um, I can't wait for next week. We're going to have a blast. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good one. Thank you. See you guys. See ya.